Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Muhammad Shafiq, and uh, this is uh, my first online lecture with you. Although it's lecture number nine, and before this lecture, we had some classroom lectures. So, in this uh, first online lecture with you, I'm going to introduce you to this uh, online class system course and uh, the recap what we have already done in our classrooms. To begin with, um, as you know, due to this situation, uh, we are forced to adopt this online uh, or recorded, rather recorded lectures. Uh, just in order to save the time of students as well as uh, the teachers. We do not waste, uh, we do not want to waste your time. Uh, so we are going to record lectures and just post it on, on, on the KCMS uh, where you can access these lectures and you can take advantage of it. The time span, as we don't know how long it's going to go, so uh, we have to concentrate upon these lectures and uh, we have to try to learn as much as possible. Uh, and we need to avoid the space of time and utilize it properly. And uh, we have to acknowledge the efforts of uh, our ICT team and uh, administration uh, to provide students these uh, recorded lectures. Although I understand this is not a perfect alternate uh, for the real time classroom lecture, but still it, it might provide you some sort of platform to move forward and indulge in activities leading to increase thirst and eventually the knowledge which is the main purpose of this whole system. I would like to raise this point that we need to understand our responsibilities and goals as teachers and students. The teachers used to make sure that uh, they are available to their students and support and offer their support to the students. While on your part, you need to realize your responsibility as to take it serious and realize your responsibility as a student and make your efforts to learn and utilize this platform and opportunity effectively as they are the few, as, as this, this is, all this system, everything it has been arranged for you because you are the system, you are your future of our country. And we look forward uh, to you as builders of our future. This uh, system of recorded lectures, how it's going to work is that uh, we are going to record lectures we are going to upload it on KCMS server and we are going to paste the link on the KCMS. So when you access your online KCMS system, uh, you would see the link of those lectures. So if you click on those lectures directly, they go on to work in this video and you can access this video and you can try to learn what it is to you. Your responsibility is uh, that whatever you learn from the lectures, whatever question may arise in your, in your minds, you should note these down, any question or comments or any points of discussion and convey it through KCMS or WhatsApp group or email to your teacher. So next time, before starting next lecture or next, next topic in the lecture, uh, 
I would try to answer your questions and clarify uh, your comments before moving forward. Although the setup of the exam has not been devised yet, uh, probably it's going to be online. But uh, for the time being, you need to concentrate on these lectures. And you might uh, get some assignments via KCMS as well as uh, quizzes and presentations. But we will keep you updated and updated uh, during uh, these lectures. So for the time being, you just need to concentrate on these lectures and try to learn as much as possible. Uh, we are working with ICT team, obviously, in administration of clusters, working hard to come up with a mechanism for uh, these presentations and quizzes. Uh, but you should not worry about these things, as there are people to take care of you. So we hope and pray that uh, all these efforts are utilized properly and uh, benefit all of us, our teachers and students. Now the next thing um, I'm going to discuss is the course structure. As I've already discussed in the classroom, but just to remind you that what is the course structure, how do we figure it? Normal circumstances, as you know that uh, during the uh, semester, there are uh, the evaluation consists on uh, assignments, presentations, midterm exam, and final exam. So it remains the same, but the mechanism might change a bit. So you should be mentally prepared for it. And uh, the next uh, thing I would like to talk about is the importance and uh, objectives of the course. As you know, the title of the course is Introduction to Logic and it's very much important as a student and as a scientist for us to know and learn logic in order to be able to make some logical argumentation, you know, the basic concept of logic, which is obviously the backbone of the system of science. So without logic, uh, you cannot survive being a scientist or a student of science. So as simple as that, it is quite important for you to learn what is logic, what is it all about, and how you can take advantage of it in order to become a successful scientist or student of science. Now, I would uh, like to begin with the basic concepts uh, as we have already discussed it in our classroom, but um, it's been a while now, so I would like to just highlight these things so that uh, you can brainstorm about them. So first of all, what is philosophy and what is logic? Basically, in order to understand what is, what is logic, first we need to know what is philosophy. Because Logic basically is a branch of philosophy. Philosophy is a combination of two Greek words, philo and so. Philo means love and sophie means wisdom or knowledge. Because in Greek language, knowledge and wisdom are interchangeable concepts. So literally Philosophy would mean love for wisdom or love for knowledge. Now, this is human nature that uh, if, you are, if you are in love with something, 
for someone, you always try, you always attempt to achieve it. For example, if you're passing by a shop in the market and showcase you looking at that and then you find a very beautiful shirt, the first thing come, which comes into your mind is what to buy it. If your pocket obviously allows you. So you go into the shop and pay the money and get a certain shirt and just be able to call it. Usually you fell in love. Similarly, all sorts of things. So in this context, if we look into the definition of philosophy, that would basically mean that we are trying to achieve knowledge, trying to achieve this purpose. So all those attempts, all those struggle we make to achieve knowledge of this world, they fall in the realm of philosophy. So I would say that you're traveling to Kirst from your hometown, from your village, and going to all the efforts you make in, like to transport, to like spending your money, buying books, coming to the first, um, your, your, you know, all, all sorts of problems you face during this travel or during your admission. All these things basically because I believe you want to achieve knowledge. That is all these efforts I would call attempt to learn philosophy. So philosophy is all, all in a nutshell all those attempts to achieve the knowledge or wisdom. And doesn't necessarily mean it has to be in a, in a formal setup like a classroom setup. In any way, in any kind of learning, in any setup whether you learn it from the elders, you sit with the, some, some experienced people, or you learn a trade, all sorts of things, I would call it philosophy. Now, how did, how did philosophy start basically? One of our teachers long time ago, when I was a student of philosophy, Shaun University, told us that, uh, and I, I really loved this quote, and I still remember it, and normally I, I repeat in all my elementary classes. That the birth of intellect was the birth of philosophy. So the birth of human being was the birth of intellect. That basically means the day God created human being, philosophy started. Why? Because man started questioning, man started wondering. What is this world about? What is this universe about? Who am I? Where am I? What I'm doing? What I'm supposed to do? All these kind of questions, basically, they are because we are blessed with the intellect. So human being, the day human being was born, the day he got the intellect, and the day he got the intellect, Day when philosophy started. So the beginning of human being is the beginning of philosophy. And throughout the history of human being, man has been trying to achieve knowledge and has been increasing his labor. And man has achieved so much in terms of knowledge, but still there is a lot to learn about. So philosophy is started with the beginning of man, and it's still going on, and God knows where it's going to end. Now that's the general concept of philosophy. But academically speaking, now philosophy has been uh, going through different times and it has given birth to so many different branches of knowledge, such as natural sciences, social sciences. So philosophy is called the mother of all sciences whether it's natural science or social science. Some people might 
differ with his opinion uh, as someone someone would say that you no know, mathematics is the mother of natural sciences because obviously without mathematics uh, there is no concept of natural science similarly the social scientists would say that sociology is the mother of all social sciences because it's all about social relationships society this is somehow true but you know deeply into it both mathematics and sociology they are trying to learn they are trying to add to the knowledge of human being while philosophy starts with that question so basically it's philosophy which has given birth to both mathematics and sociology and for the for the basically for the convenience of humans man has further bifurcated this branches of knowledge into different branches so with the passage of time different sciences branched out from the philosophy and uh, they were given different names like knowledge about physical bodies became physics or chemical became chemistry about life became biology all sorts of things so that means that that raises another question that okay in a minute all these branches of knowledge have branched out from philosophy so what do we study in philosophy now well there are certain things there are certain problems which are not solved yet so they fall in the realm of philosophy philosophy as a subject as an academic subject still deals with four major branches there are four main branches of philosophy such as metaphysics epistemology theology and logic i will briefly uh, reflect upon these branches before moving to the logic so metaphysics It's a branch of philosophy which deals with all those entities which are beyond physical world. Because meta means beyond, physics means basically physical world. So, what is the reality beyond this physical world? What is the reality behind this universe? What is the reality of man? Whatever physical we see in this world, what is behind that? What is beyond that? how this universe was created if it was created some people think it was evolved so if it was evolved how did it evolve how did it came to being man being a part of this universe what is the reality of man so these kind of questions are that with the uh, the branch of philosophy which is called metaphysics the other uh, second branch is called epistemology and epistemology is concerned with the knowledge generally speaking everyone talks about knowledge as we did to begin when we said philosophy means love for knowledge so epistemology is a branch of philosophy which tries to reflect upon what does knowledge mean what knowledge itself is what do we mean by knowledge knowledge how do we gain knowledge what is a genuine knowledge what is pseudo knowledge what is a valid knowledge what is invalid knowledge all these questions are dealt with in epistemology the third branch which is called theology theology has two major parts one is called aesthetics the other one is called ethics Aesthetics deal, deals with the theory of art, concepts of beauty, etc., etc. On the other hand, ethics, the moral philosophy, deals with the concepts of good and bad, right and wrong. What is good? What is meant by good? What is meant by bad? What do we call right? What do we call wrong? 
what is that particular element which makes an action right or wrong what is that particular thing which makes something good or bad these questions are quite intriguing though are dealt with branch of philosophy which is called axiology now the fourth last one but not least it's called logic which is the main concern of this basically the fourth we are going to uh, talk about throughout the semester so what is logic it's a fourth branch of philosophy which is basically logic is the study of those methods and principles which are distinct with with, with distinguish between correct reasoning and incorrect reasoning now one would ask what do we mean by reasoning by reasoning we mean logic by by, by reasoning we mean argument specialty of human being is basically to convince people with the argument rather than force man is superior or man is called ashraf al makhluqat why because he has got this ability to think and then come up with such kind of argument to which he or she can convince the listener so logic deals with all these concepts how to make an argument what are the laws what are the principles through which we can make an argument and then we can deliver this argument in order to convince people in order to achieve our goals why do we need logic simple without convincing people we cannot achieve our goal whether we are scientist whether we are a vendor whether we are a doctor whether we are a lawyer each and every step of our lives we need to convince people and in order to convince them we need to know the art of argument the art of reasoning and logic is all about these laws and principles so if someone knows logic he or she would obviously be good in reasoning and through reasoning we can convince people and by convincing them we can achieve our goals so basically this is what we are going to talk about our, our, our semester i hope to you, you guys like this lecture and i hope you take advantage of it and if there are any questions please do ask before the next lecture so that i can explain it before starting next class thank you very much